It's episode two of this six part mini series in which I'm taking a look at the entire lineup of Captain Fawcett fragrances. And today I'm going to be giving my thoughts on the one that actually caught my eye for the very first time and uh, basically the reason I decided to blind buy the rest of the collection. This goes by the name of Maharaja, and to find out all you need to know about this one, stay tuned to this episode of Mags Frags. <laughs> Yes, hello again and welcome to this latest episode of Mags Frags, where it's the fragrance that's the star of the show. My name's Paul and today's scent of the day is this one called Maharaja from Captain Fawcett. And as I briefly mentioned in the intro, this is the one that uh, first got me hooked on this brand uh, because it just kept popping up in my search listings on, on uh, Amazon of all places and it just kept catching my eye whilst I was searching for some other Middle Eastern scents to review on the channel. And I must have seen it about probably 50 or 60 times uh, pop up before I finally decided to check it out properly and uh, go ahead and buy it but uh, I'm so glad that I did now. So this is a, a woody floral musk and it came out in 2021 and was produced in collaboration with the Jodper company. It was uh, a finalist in last year's Global Beauty Awards in the Best New Niche Fragrance category and was highly commended. It comes in a, a 50ml size bottle and it's priced at £68, uh, but at the time of recording this video it's uh, currently out of stock on the main website so you may have to find it either on Amazon or at your local stockist. Okay, so into the presentation, and the box arrives in the familiar vintage style brown cardboard design, uh, and it features a, a metallic orange sticker that runs around the side of the box there, with, and it also contains the name of the fragrance. Uh, there's also the name printed on the front, as well as the Captain Fawcett logo, and the size and the concentration. At the top is all the same information repeated again and uh, around the back is just a brief overview about what the what to expect from the scent itself. And finally at the bottom there's the, uh, the barcode which is displaying a, a very fine looking muzzy. Inside the box is uh, a red and gold pattern design uh, looking all Indian and regal and splendid and then there's uh, a pull up tab featuring a crown with uh, a moustache which reveals the inlay box which is uh, again a design feature that I really like and it's something that I've not come across before. There's a, a, like a water lily design that wraps around the outside of it and the whole thing then just opens up and uh, inside there's a, a full story about the man himself and also a portrait. The, uh, the bottle looks uh, really eye-catching and uh, opulent in a deep red translucent colourway and this intricate gold detailing uh, on the front. The cap does fit uh, a little bit more securely and firmly around the atomizer than the one that I reviewed yesterday but it does st still feel uh, a little bit lightweight and I'd uh, definitely be careful and not uh, try to pick this up by the cap because it doesn't click into place. There's a, a gold atomizer which delivers a nice short even blast of juice and overall I'd give the uh, presentation a solid 9 out of 10 uh, because had it not been such a, an attractive design I probably wouldn't have uh, been reviewing it today. Okay so into the note breakdown and the top notes in this are citruses the heart notes uh, are rose and pepper and the base notes are musk, cedar and leather. Okay, so this one opens up with a fresh blast of citruses for the first few minutes or so. But then you'll get a prominent rose note that comes through. And if you're a regular visitor to the channel, uh, you'll already know that I'm not the biggest fan of rose dominant fragrances. But this has, has a, like a really pleasant opening that's not old fashioned or too floral smelling. It's very bright and uplifting and the rose is more like a sprinkling of pink velvety rose petals rather than coming off smelling like an artificial red rose scented air freshener or an old lady's handbag. 
It's uh, velvety smooth with a, a mild powderiness and there's also a fair bit of leathery sweetness and it's a very nice introduction that instantly says niche quality and it makes you think of luxury fragrances from brands like Penhaligon's, Montal or Memo Paris etc who all do really opulent Middle Eastern inspired fragrances really well. As it dries down, um, the rose fades quite a bit and it becomes far less noticeable and it transforms into more of a darker, smoky, musky aroma uh, but still smells fairly sweet, warm and inviting. It's a very luxurious smelling scent that's very smooth and well blended and you do get a, a mysterious Middle Eastern vibe from it. But it's not one that I smelled and I thought wow this is super unique and I haven't ever come across this uh, smell before. It's uh, a scent profile that if you're into your niche fragrances you'll probably have uh, sm it'll smell familiar and uh, I've definitely come across uh, similar smelling fragrances a few times before uh, but that's not taking anything away from it because it, it does smell very high quality. Yeah, this is a fairly warm and sweet smelling fragrance that I would say shines in cooler weather conditions or to wear as a, a nighttime fragrance. It produces a relaxing and laid back kind of scent aroma and it would suit a chilled setting such as a date night or if you're heading out to a, a quiet bar. It's not one I'd consider wearing as a work scent or, or just casually throughout the day and it does have more of a dressed up elegant quality about it. It's suitable for both men and women in my opinion, uh, but it's fairly grown up so probably better suited to anyone over the age of 25 or maybe even 30. It'd be a, a perfect way to wear, uh, one to wear like as a guest at a wedding uh, and I do get that kind of dressed up formal chilled out occasion vibe from it. The performance is good and considerably better than the one that I reviewed yesterday. It projects well for the first hour uh, but then it becomes a bit more intimate and people will need to be within a couple of feet of you to catch a, a whiff of it. Uh, it'll last five or six hours uh, but then it's virtually all over and you might want to uh, give yourself a few extra sprays if you're heading out all evening and uh, maybe want to get a bit more from it. Uh, but it's, uh, I, I would say it's not, a, it's not a, a massive performer, but it's definitely not a weak fragrance. Um, but it's just not one that's going to fill a room and uh, last you like 10 hours plus. Like I say, this one is uh, more for your classy event where less is more and you don't want the people around you to be choking out on your, on your scent cloud. It does enough just to get you noticed, uh, but it's more of a, a whisper fragrance than one that shouts. This is a very high class, uh, expensive smelling scent with undoubtedly a, a niche quality. Like I said earlier, it's probably not the most unique smelling fragrance that I've personally ever come across myself, uh, but for anyone who's thinking about maybe trying out a few niche uh, type scents for the, for the first time, then this is probably the perfect one to ease you in, because there's nothing challenging in this whatsoever, uh, and it gives you that smoky, musky dry down uh, that you just don't get with designer brands. The presentation is great and for £68 I don't think the uh, the price is too bad either and it's definitely worth picking up if you can uh, manage to get your hands on a bottle. I really enjoy it and uh, after smelling how high quality it was for the first time it just made me intrigued enough to, uh, to go and buy the whole collection so for that alone I would give this uh, a solid 9 out of 10. Okay, so that's about it for part two, uh, but coming up in tomorrow's episode, I'm going to be giving my thoughts on this one called Triumphant, and it's pretty clear to see what's inspired the bottle's logo design. Uh, so don't forget to tune in uh, tomorrow night, round about 7pm, to find out all about this one. And as always guys, if you have uh, enjoyed this video and you've got any value from it whatsoever, uh, then please don't forget to give it a, a thumbs up and su uh, to subscribe to the channel. It helps with all the algorithms and all that jazz. It's also uh, always great to hear your opinions and your critiques and your thoughts on all of the fragrances that feature in these reviews. So uh, don't forget to keep your comments coming down in the comments section and I will try to respond to uh, as many as I can. So once again, thank you very much for tuning in to uh, this latest episode. Stay safe, keep smelling fresh and I'll see you tomorrow night for another one. Bye bye for now.